Hi guys, it's Mr. Landlord here. I just thought I'd put things into perspective of when the top three, really, the heavyweights, and just to show you in a chart form, really. Now, we go to Wilder's chart. If we go through, you know, these are the fights, a few bums. Then he falls to burn, so the peak rises a bit on his opposition. Then Ortiz, it rose again a bit. Then Fury won, it rose. That was for the lineal, so-called lineal belt and the WBC belt draw. Then for Ortiz again, which I think the peak dropped because he's getting older and slower by the day. Then Brazil was another slight drop. You know, I think we thought Brazil was better than that, but he was just got worse since AJ demolished him. Then we go on to Fury 2. So overall, he's pretty flat lined with a couple of goodish wins and a draw. And then obviously Fury smashed him. So let's go to Fury's chart now. So there's Tyson Fury chart. He sort of had a few good wins and he fought Vlad and obviously got the nick got a win I'd say but some people say nicked it and he should have had the rematch but he never then he went on a two year and a half year layoff. Then he had two bum fights, no real challenges. Then he goes on to Wilder, which is a drop down to me from Vlad, but still good opposition for relative for what's around. Gets a draw from the couch. Then he has a bum fight. Can't remember his name now. So that weren't a test. Then he went for the Wallium fight. Now, shouldn't a true champion really? I'm not against Fury, but why didn't he take White on that time? This build up his profile in America bullshit. That would have built up a lot quicker and better beating White if he's the best since sliced bread by the Fury fans. But he took Wallion on. Anyway, he got banged up a bit there, didn't he? And 12 rounds it took to beat him. So where does that put Wilder into perspective? So the second fight, Wilder 2. Yeah, he's better than Wallion, I guess, on paper because Wilder at least won a world title and beat Ortiz. But, you know, these Fury fans, we care, we're getting carried away because look at that chart. It's not brilliant, really, is it? Vlad, you know, he's beaten an all-time great, but was he that motivated, Vlad? He could underestimate him a bit, and we wanted to see the rematch, really. But So, apart from Wilder, again, I said he's only beat Ortiz. So, Fury fans will think he's the best thing to decide, but we've got to be a bit careful yet. Until he beats AJ and White, we can't say that, really, yet, can we? Now we've moved to AJ's chart. There he is. So, we got White. It's a great British win, British title. Two Dons really slugged it out. And obviously AJ gets the win. Then Martin a champion. So that's the peak because everyone was saying Martin beat him, especially Fury and then people in the boxing game said Martin was so good. Anyway, Martin froze or not, he got banged out in two rounds, didn't he? Then he goes, he beat Molina, which is a bit of a bum fight, but it was a, you know, just his first title defence. Let's give him one easy title defence. I mean, that Wilder's had plenty, hasn't he? Then he fought a great Vlad at Wembley. Vlad was re-motivated. Give everything. He looked great, really. Re-energised. Put everything into it. And AJ gets the win. So does he go then to like Fury and fight a couple of low opposition? No. Supposed to take Povecki in. No, Pulev on a title defence, mandatory. Pulev got a bad shoulder. Ortiz went after Wilder. Let's be honest, he was going to be signed up to fight AJ after this fight. Anyway, Takam comes in as a late replacement. Good, strong African guy. French-African and give him a good uh, test. AJ in the end was wobbling all over the ring and the ref saved him. People say, oh, he's an early stoppage. It weren't. They want something to happen like Wilder, don't they, where he's actually paralysed on the ropes. 
But I think it's a good stoppage myself. I see him knees buckle and that's the sign he was on his way out. So no easy opposition still. Then he goes on to Parker to unify another belt. I mean Parker's unbeaten by him, beat Ruiz in a close fight. So that's another top opposition. You keep top taking up top opposition on, you could get caught. You know, that's the way it goes, that's why Fury's been very choosy, just gambles once in a three or four fights. Anyway, he beats Parker in a good technical battle. It's offered the next fight was offered to Fury. Didn't want it at forty percent despite having no belts. Wilder didn't want forty percent of Wembley and massive gate. He betted on himself, I guess they say. So he fought Ruiz instead, as old uh, American bloke, what was his name? Fucking drug lord. He didn't. He cut, fell out, didn't he, Miller? So Ruiz won, come in, and AJ thought he'd finish him third round, knocked him down, went in for the kill, and got caught with a solid headshot to the temple area type thing, and. Uh, couldn't recover really, but he learnt from that, not be complacent. I suppose it's still a top fight really, isn't it? People would like to knock him, especially the Fury fans, oh, he's no good. Then he wins it in a rematch, in the second fight. Boxing masterclass, job done. So, you know, people say, oh, he ran, he never ran, he just used technical ability, let's not get in close and gamble, well, I'll do that once I get the belts back. So, AJ's been proven back to back to back tough opposition 